Hello, and welcome to my video called Jbenet Talbzar, which just means Maltese cheese with pepper. So Malta is that little country in the circle there. It's uh, just south of Sicily in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, it's a little close-up of it. As you can see, not a very large land mass. So this milk was originally made using sheep's milk. Uh, I'm using cow's milk because I can't really get sheep's milk where I live. So the cheese themselves, it's a small, soft cheese made in a small mold. Uh, it's not aged, it's not pressed, uh, and it's spreadable. You can spread it on crackers like straight out of the mold, uh, and it tastes pretty good. But uh, traditionally, uh, it was used as a method of preserving sheep's milk. And so the traditional way of having a chbanet would be to uh, dry it out, uh, that was one step in the preservation, and then to pickle it in vinegar to kill off any uh, other bacteria or molds uh, or funguses. So you would uh, dry it out, pickle it in vinegar, and uh, then basically uh, it turns into a cheese that you can leave unrefrigerated on the countertop in a jar for months and months. Uh, my record so far is five months uh, without refrigeration and it was just fine tasted just as good as the day i made it um but i don't know that's only because i ran out maybe it could go longer i'm not sure okay so the first thing you need to do is sterilize your equipment put all your stainless steel equipment into the pot that you're going to use put about an inch of water on the bottom get it on some heat and boil that for, steam it for 15 minutes, no less. And while that is steaming, I'm gonna sterilize the cheese molds themselves. I can't put those in the pot or they will melt. So instead I'm spraying them with vinegar or 5% acetic acid by volume. So yeah, they will melt in that pot. I found that out the hard way, I lost a few of them. Also, while that's happening, I'm going to fill in my cheese log. That's just a record of what I used and how I did it, so that if I, anything changes, I'll know what I did, and I can go back and make other changes. So this is the setup that I like to use. I use a water bath and a sous vide. But uh, by no means do you need to use this uh, method. You can use a simple a double boiler method. Uh, just taking the pot that you're using and putting it on top of another pot and uh, heating it up by steam. The only thing you really want to avoid is um, putting the pot on direct heat or uh, the temperature rises too quickly and you can burn the milk. Okay, so the 15 minutes is up. So just be careful taking off that lid. Watch out for that steam. And we're going to take all the equipment and we're going to lay it out on a clean tea cloth. Just be careful because it is still really hot. So what I'm doing now, I'm just cooling down the pot because I don't want to put the milk into it while it's still hot from the steaming. So I'm just cooling it down with some water. Okay, and here's the milk that I'm using today. It's Seal Test 3.25% milk fat whole milk. And yeah, in Ontario, Canada, where I live, the only way you can get four liters at a time is in these plastic bags, which makes cutting it and pouring it into there without spilling it a bit of a challenge. But uh, there we go. So the recipe for this cheese is eight liters of 3.5% whole milk. So if yours is 3.25% like uh, we get it where I live. Uh, stay tuned and I'll show you how to bring that up to 3.5%. Three quarters of a teaspoon of calcium chloride diluted in a half cup of non-chlorinated water. Two teaspoons of liquid rennet also diluted in a half cup of non-chlorinated water. Pickling salt, so that's non-iodized salt, no additives. Vinegar, olive oil, and lots of fresh cracked black pepper.
Okay, so there's the last bag of milk going in. All right, so to bring the total milk fat up to 3.5%, I'm using 35% heavy cream. And I'm gonna use four and a half tablespoons of that. That will bring the total milk fat up to 3.5%. So now just grab your ladle and give that a nice gentle stir. When you're stirring milk for these recipes, for making cheese, uh, never froth it up or stir it too vigorously. Uh, you don't want to get a lot of air into it. I just use gentle figure eight type of strokes, making sure that you push the milk down and pull the milk up. So I'm gonna stir that for about 30 seconds. Okay, so put your pot into your water bath or onto your double boiler, whichever you happen to be using. Put a thermometer of some sort in there. I use a digital meat thermometer uh, for basic temperature measurements. I always put a lid on to keep dust and hair from floating into there. And heat the milk up to 13 degrees centigrade. And at 13 degrees, we're going to add our calcium chloride solution. Again, gently stirring in that same figure eight pattern for 30 seconds. And as always, put the lid back on. So we're gonna put the lid back on and we're going to heat that up to 36 degrees Celsius. So there you can see I'm checking with the more accurate thermometer. The meat thermometer only does whole numbers. So there it is at 36, whereas that smaller thermometer, I can see that it goes to 36.6, .6, which is what we're looking. So at 36.6 degrees, we're gonna add the liquid rennet solution and stir gently for no more than one minute because as it starts to coagulate, we don't want to uh, disturb it. So no more than one minute we'll stir that for in that nice gentle up and down figure eight pattern. And then about 50 seconds in, what you're seeing me do right there is just stopping the milk. So I don't want it spinning around when I put the lid on. I want it to be nice and still so that it'll co coagulate. So we're gonna put the lid back on and we're going to let that set for 30 minutes. We're letting the curd set. So 30 minutes later, Take the thermometer out of there. And the next thing we're gonna do is check for a clean break in the curd. So I make one cut across the curd and then I'm just sort of lifting it with the knife and checking to see if it holds together. I wasn't too sure with the knife so I used the finger method. So you just dip your finger in and pull and it made a bit of a sloppy break. So every time it does that, we're just gonna add 15 more minutes of set time and then check again for a clean break. And this time it broke clean enough. All right, so as soon as you get a clean break, you're gonna cut through the curds, cut through the entire depth, so make sure that knife gets all the way down to the bottom. And we're cutting this into about three quarter of an inch uh, wide strips. I forgot to uh, slice around the uh, perimeter of the curd inside the pot, so make sure you do that too. What the slicing does is it allows the uh, curd, or uh, more of the whey, to uh, seep out of the curd as we uh, let it set. So the next timer is now two hours and 30 minutes. We're gonna let that curd sit in there and shrink for two and a half hours. 
All right, so two and a half hours later, as you can see, uh, we take the lid off and the curd has shrunk. That's why there's now spaces in between. So we take the pot over to our molds and we just take a, a slotted ladle and uh, start scooping the curds into the molds. Now the curd is going to be uh, pretty loose. Uh, so just be gentle as you can with it. Try and get as much curd as you can uh, into each mold and uh, try and let some of the whey, as much of the whey as you can drip out uh, as you're transferring it. Now it is pretty loose, so don't be alarmed if it, you know, it falls apart or some of it goes right through the mold. Fill them up uh, best you can. And you're going to want to fill each cheese mold uh, to almost overflowing because that curd is going to set down into a uh, cheese that's only about you know a half an inch thick at the most so it does a lot of settling so there you can see that I am filling them up quite a bit so this is what it looks like in the pot as I'm scooping out the uh, curds now I've tried in the past to dump the whey out first but because the curds are so loose uh, I found that mostly what was happening was the curd was just seeping out with the whey so this seems like the best method I could find All right, so this is just a clip of the setup that I use. I just use a Tupperware container with a cooling rack and I set my uh, molds on top of that and they drip away. All right, next comes the pickling salt. So we're gonna take a very generous amount of uh, pickling salt and we're going to sprinkle it on top of each cheese. Be very generous with that salt. The salt serves a few functions. Um, it preserves the cheese, so it prevents uh, mold and bacteria growth while they're dripping. Gives the cheese uh, some flavor and uh, helps to uh, draw the whey uh, out of the curds a little bit more. All right, next thing to do is just uh, get one of those fruit fly covers for your fruits and your salads that you use in the summertime. Cover those up and you're going to let them sit there and drip for eight hours. Okay, so here we are eight hours later and we're going to do the first flipping. So make sure you wash your hands really well before uh, doing this because you're gonna have to touch the cheese and you don't wanna get any molds or bacteria on them to grow. And when you do the first flipping, uh, you're gonna notice that the curd is still pretty loose uh, so it tends to want to break up a little bit so just be gentle as you flip it over so just flip it over right onto your hand okay and gently place the mold back over the other side of the cheese and kind of flip it back in there you'll notice that I'm shaking the molds too as I pick them up I'm trying to get as much whey as I can to drip off of them each and every time if you do happen to uh, break the cheese as you're doing this or it falls in there or it splits or anything like that. Don't worry about it Just put it back into the mold. There's still lots of time for it to uh, Form in the mold and it will work. I've done it many many times All right, now that the cheese has been flipped, you're gonna take your salt and give the other side of the cheese another very generous 
sprinkling of salt. Cover the cheese up and let them drip for another eight hours. Okay, eight hours later, we are going to do the second flipping. Much like the first, only this time the uh, cheese has formed a little bit more, so it'll be a little bit easier. Still gonna shake off as much whey as I can from each mold. But as you can see, uh, they're a little more well formed now and a little bit easier to handle, less likely to break up. But still try and be a little bit gentle with them. Also this time there's going to be no more salting. So you only salt uh, when you first put the curds in and after the first flipping. Other than that you're just flipping them over. So once again we're going to cover them up and uh, let them drip for another eight hours. Here we are eight hours later and we're going to do the third flipping. Same thing as the first two times. Again, no salting this time. Don't forget to wash your hands. One of the other things that uh, I do in between flippings, sometimes I'll drain the, so you can see actually there, the cheese is getting thinner and thinner. Uh, I'll drain the uh, containers at the bottom just so that I can see how much whey is dripping off of them. Because once the whey stops dripping, then it's time for the next step. Another eight hours, here we are at the fourth and final flipping of the cheese. All right, eight hours after the fourth flipping, you'll see that uh, the cheese is pretty much no longer dripping anyway, and it's time for the next step. So back in the day, they would have taken the cheese, covered it up, and left it outside in the Maltese heat uh, for about a week, a week and a half, to allow it to dry up. Uh, where I live, uh, we don't have that heat, and we don't have that dry air, so I use a dehydrator. Grab a plate, grab your black pepper. You're gonna mill about a third of that entire container of pepper. So it's a good workout on the forearms, but just cover that plate in uh, a whole bunch of fresh black pepper. Then take your cheese and you're going to cover every last part of it in as much black pepper as it can take. Make sure you get both sides, make sure you get all the edges, and just totally cover it in black pepper.
when I put the pepper and cheese into the dehydrator, I try to stagger them. I want to try and make sure that I get a good amount of airflow around each. And about halfway through the drying process, I'm going to take the trays and reverse them so that the top one's at the bottom and that the bottom one's at the top for at least half of the drying period. Okay, so we'll put the cover on and we'll get the dehydrator running. So I'm gonna set this for a nice hot Maltese summer day of about 40 degrees Celsius. All right, we'll turn that on and we're going to let the cheese dry out for 48 hours at 40 degrees Celsius and once again about halfway through we're going to reverse the order of those trays. So by the magic of editing here we are two days later and the cheese is nicely dried out. It's quite hard so it shouldn't have almost any give at all. Nice crust of black pepper on top of it. Very solid. Then we're going to take a nice big jar and I'm just going to arrange the cheese in that jar. Now when you arrange the cheese in there, don't just stack them one on top of the other. Try and have them sitting up against each other. You want the vinegar to be able to reach as much of the surface as, of each piece of cheese as you can. Okay, so there's our table vinegar, 5% acetic acid. And as you go to pour this in, don't pour it, try not to pour it too much right onto the top of the cheese. You don't want to wash the pepper off, so just kind of pour it down the side of the uh, container. Fill it all the way up so that every piece of cheese is completely submerged in vinegar. Put the lid on. And we're gonna let that pickle for 24 hours in the vinegar. All right, 24 hours later, and pickling is now done. So we're just going to carefully drain the vinegar out of there. Not all of it. You want to save about, uh, I don't know, about a half a cup or an inch or so of vinegar at the bottom of the container. Some of the pepper does come off, but that's okay. There's still lots in there. So drain about 90% of it off and then cover it in a very generous amount of extra virgin olive oil. And then put the cover on and give it a bit of a roll around so that each piece gets olive oil and vinegar covering it. And as you leave it on your countertop, uh, I recommend you do this once every three, four, five days of a week or whatever, just to make sure uh, it helps with the preservation. They stay moist, they stay covered in vinegar and oil. And that's it. There's your jbainet, ready to eat. 
Uh, it's still going to be a little bit soft after the pickling. It's going to taste best and have the best possible texture about two or three days after you've put it into the jar. Uh, you can eat it right away, uh, but I prefer to let it wait a couple of days uh, till it firms up again a little bit more. So here we're going to do our taste test. As you can see, uh, it's softer again now that it's absorbed the liquid from the vinegar. It doesn't crumble. It's still fairly firm, but it's uh, nice and soft. Has a nice uh, sour and cheesy taste, and the black pepper gives it uh, just a little bit of spice. I like to cover it in some fresh olive oil and some fresh ground black pepper before I eat it. All right, here we go. And I can tell you it tasted fantastic. So that is it. Thank you so much for watching my video on how to make Jbainit Talbzar. Enjoy.